Hello guys, it's Brigadier Charles here, and uh, I'm bringing you a replay of a game I did a few weeks ago uh, against a friend of mine, who is Mabus here. Um, this isn't going to be a uh, particularly difficult or amazing game. He's a he's a decent player, um, but he is only just getting started, and you know I think. It's only fair to say that he puts up a heck of a fight in this game, considering he's brand new to it. Um, so I hope to bring you more games. I know I've been gone for quite a while, but uh, you know, finalist, got dissertation, got a lot of other stuff, which unfortunately at the minute is more important than this. Um, but now I've got a bit more spare time on my hand, I do plan to bring you several videos a week, um, starting with this. So, uh, where to get started? I'm playing a Polish deck. Um, and he is playing a Soviet deck. So you see he's put down two fobs for some reason. I'm not sure why he's done that. Um, especially in a 1v1, as long as you've got plenty of resupply vehicles, one fob is always going to be enough. Um, but he had been thinking about playing a, an airborne deck, and I just advised him against it because they're difficult decks for 1v1s. I don't think they're very good for 1v1s. And um, they're not very good if you're very new to the game, because they're very difficult to play. They're very good at the early game, you can kind of get a rush, you can take up positions easily, but as soon as your enemy has plenty of air support, sorry, or um, air cover in the form of a ground-based AA, especially gun AA, you're just gone and you, you're very unlikely to have enough armour and so forth. But anyway, enough of my blabbering. So, we can see I've brought out a never for each of my three groups, or sorry, two nevers and a rom, as well as some probably groms in promets, uh, a wilk for each group I believe, yep, um, and some scots, possibly with commandosi, I'm not sure. You see I brought out quite a few command vehicles as well, I've got one T55 AD1 here, another here, have I got one over here? Nope. And no command over here, and I think this is probably for Moser, and uh, an MI24W, we'll just see what Maybus has. So we can see he's gone quite expensive. He's got four BMP3s here, three BMP3s there, three BMP3s there. And you see he has actually thought, you know, he's probably Conquer Squad there, some Iglers or some Strailers in each group. He's got a UAZ out for command, but he's only got the one command, um, which for me I like to have at least two because you want one to leave behind, obviously, but you want to immediately be grabbing points so that you can get more more units into the field, especially with Delta so close um, and usually uncontested at the, at the very beginning. Um, he's also brought out some T-80Bs and good, he brought, brought out a Tunguska as well. Let's see, he's got some air cover. Now, oh, and another UAZ, that's good to see. So, my idea here is my biggest group is going to shoot straight up to Bravo and take this point here, secure along this the end of this town, and then put some advanced units out into this general area here, partly to um, as a uh, an attack or a small group that can slow him down, allow me to know when he's coming, and do some damage before he hits the main body of my force. And I have a group going out just to secure this bottom end of Foxtrot, um, in case. And if he doesn't really push hard, to then just go straight up and secure the other side. The idea I usually have, um, or that I usually prefer, is to secure here and here, put some recon or some spoiling units up there, and then with my air cover here, push an attack through here. Because there's a lot more cover, you can secure that tree line, it's very short distance, it's very easy to do. Um, and I have a group going up here, much smaller group. This is really intended as a holding force, I generally for some reason don't like to push through Alpha, partly it's this big open gap here on my side, there are more buildings and stuff but um, usually the enemy will secure that turn, he hasn't fast moved his units unfortunately so usually the enemy will secure that turn and this tree line before you can get there um, and it becomes quite difficult to attack either way um, so here I'm just going to put my Wilks in this, my Wilk in this tree line with the ROM and the Promets which have probably got um, just uh, regular AA inventory. I think probably um, Groms. I think they are. Um, I do like the Polish deck. I don't play it often enough. And I've brought out a uh, Conkers here. Apparently sitting out in the open, um, which I probably hadn't realised at the time. This is an older replay. Um, so I've just unloaded my infantry here. 
uh, Formosa, Commandosi. My Wilk is way too far up. My Commandosi and Formosa should be up with it, giving it cover, as well as my Groms probably up here. Um, you can see I've secured the bottom end here. We're both playing quite cautiously. I knew he was playing an armoured deck, um, and I think this is a general deck for me. So I didn't want to get caught out. So, but I've got Formosa here, I've got my Groms in, so I've got Recon with a bit of anti infantry. My uh, Commandosi here going out long on the left. Um, don't know why he's put his UAZ there, where it would be, end up being alone. Um, and just worrying that I didn't have quite strong enough of a presence, especially with anti tank. I uh, I bring over this Mi 24W with its fantastic cocoon missiles. It's the accuracy on those. 55% accuracy, which is pretty good for um, uh, Warsaw Pact uh, ATGMs. It's a very cool looking helicopter as well. I do like the look of Russian, well it is technically Russian, attack helicopters in this period. So I am spread out quite thin, there's a huge gap in my line that I start to get quite worried about. And I'm pushing my Neva out to try and make sure that I have um, a good net of uh, air cover. I haven't unloaded my promets over here, which seems a little silly to me at this point, and my Scots. Um, but you can see, and uh, my SC7BM coming in. Did it kill anything? One transport. Not a really worthwhile strike. I don't lose the BM. So a five point transport. And he's got lots of motor stroke. Factorias, not a very good. ATGM, that 45% accuracy and only 16 AP. Um, conkers are significantly better, or Conkers M. Um, and anyway, they should, I personally, I would have put the Strellas back here, or in the town here, and I'd have put the Factoria there. So I'm moving up my units on the left here. Trying to move the MI24W around as well, just to give them any air support they might need. And I finally moved up my Commandosi into this tree line, Formosa as well. I'd probably, in looking back at it, would have put my Formosa here um, and my Commandosi in these buildings. Um, the Scot 2 is probably not worth having up here, to be honest. Would have kept them back. Um, the Wilk, probably in cover in this set of trees here, with the Promets just behind in case he shoves any helicopters up. The Groms shouldn't be this far back, and I should probably have something covering my command, but it's an armoured command, so it's a lot safer than it would be, and I've unloaded everything over here, so let's see what units I'm bringing in. Ah, so, Sokol here, nice little Polish helicopter, probably with Formosa, um, can't think of anything else I'd have put in it, um, but I do start to bring up artillery. So this is an RM-70, which I believe is a cluster, yep, so I'm not sure what the target is, I'm going to say the target is the BMP3s, because these are expensive at 35 points each. They're really, really good. You can see here they've got the Arkham missile, which is one of the best missiles the Soviet Union gets, um, as well as 100, 100mm main gun and a 30mm um, supporting weapon. So they're fantastic vehicles, really something you don't want to be losing or wasting. So at the minute, don't seem to be doing very much. They're, they're even surviving this cluster barrage surprisingly well. Much better than, you know, you'd expect. Oh, and that Tunguskit is probably going to kill my MI24W. I'm trying to move it away. Do I get it away? I think I do. But look, those BMP3s damaged, but not dead. Now, I'm sure I'm going to use... Oh, that's a bit loud, sorry. Definitely going to lose that. Let me just change my volume. That was far too loud. Um, da -da -da -da. SFX volume down. Down. There we go. Because that was uh, kind of draining me out. Now, he hasn't unloaded this infantry in the BMP3s, which to me seems a little foolish. Um, because they are infantry that could be used to garrison this town, or at least to move around here, which is a big open flank. Again, I don't know if he's played this map before, um, it was definitely 
one of his I think fourth or fifth games and he has he, he improves very very quickly he's uh, one of the better gamers that I play with um, so he's moving his BMP 3s into this wood they are damaged and they're panicked but if I had any infantry in these woods they'd just absolutely annihilate them so I've brought up some Spadakras Spadokronyarze I think it is yeah which are decent shock infantry um, and I've got four squads of them with their uh, Scott twos with the Malyutkas. Again, the Malyutkas are a bit of a piece of crap, but at 15 points, getting an ATGM on your vehicle, on your transport, is kind of useful. And I have reinforced this flank, the Conkers, especially as I was worried about these BMP3s and the Wilk. Um, although, these BMP3s, if they get my T72 with those Arcan missiles, 255 gone, oh, unfortunately, because they're panic, taking a very long time to aim, and I just move up my Wilk. Otherwise those Arcan missiles would have been extremely dangerous. So that's 70 points there that could have been um, better used. But his MI4A there can cause me a lot of problems with all those missiles except he's flying right over my Commandozi so he's gone. Um, let me just have a look at what else, what's going on elsewhere. So, okay, um, I did move my Commandozi up intending to uh, unload them here and take the town, but his T-80Bs and those oof, those Afghanskis moving up and annihilating them. The Afghanskis which are extraordinarily deadly against infantry with those quad, I believe, yeah, quad 20mm cannons. An unbelievable rate of fire, excellent suppression. And now my Wilk is uh, having a bro down against these three T-80Bs. The Wilk at 85 points has 15 front armour, a decent gun. It's one of the really good Polish tanks. These are 80 points as well though. Um, I think had Mabus moved them up to a better position, um, those Cobra missiles and their gun would have completely trashed me, but only 14 front armour and the gun he's got is 2 points of AP less. Um, same accuracy, I think the same stabiliser, or better stabiliser, but my Wilk has taken a kicking um, and his remaining T-80Bs are very high health, and he's moving up a Tunguska M here, which is uh, going to cause me trouble bringing in any air support. My Sockle, I decide to unload here, um, with its... it may actually be a two-squad, I can't remember, it's not Kampschwimmers, I can't remember the um, two-squad Polish one. It's It's been a while since I've properly sat down with this game, I've been so, so busy writing about the, uh, the development of the Soviet Navy that I just have not been able to get much else done. Um, so yeah, you can see it's a little bit of a standstill. I'm trying to push up through the centre as I've realised he doesn't have a lot here. Um, but you can see he's reinforced massively in the back here. Um, and all of this could be up in this tree line giving me hell. And really giving me hell. So all my commandosi have gotten into the town. Um, so volume's still a bit loud there, guys. Going to do a hell of a lot of damage against these Motostroki. Commandosi, which are elite infantry, um, with that fantastic AK-74U and a CQC machine gun against, you know, not fantastic Motostrokis. With just with the standard AK-74, regular training, and the static machine gun are just going to get annihilated by these two squads of Commandosi. 15 man squads as well, but before it got destroyed, that Tunguska did manage to take out in just a few seconds of fire quite a few, you know, three men. Just quite worried me a lot. I was thinking that I wasn't going to be able to get it. Oh, sorry, I was thinking that he would wipe them out. But these BMP3s are going to cause a hell of a lot of damage had they been moved up properly. Um, you see here I'm bringing in Sokols probably with elite infantry and uh, it is Formosa oops sorry about that moving up with their fantastic pallet uh, grenade launcher keeping my circle just behind the mountainside here hoping it doesn't get spotted and ready to pounce when they when the uh, Formosa find the command so you can see Mabus has pushed really effectively here he's pushing me back um, I should have moved my ROM back already because it's really quite vulnerable there 
but he didn't press his advantage, I think, in a way that he could have, especially with that under 24 VP, all those BMP3s, the Afghans, because he had core of a really powerful attacking force. But unfortunately, um, he stalled, I think, worried that I had a lot more than I was letting off. Um, I'm going to lose this MI24 here, um, which is really foolish of me, um, throwing it into his AA. But I do bring up three more Wilks, who are very badly positioned at the minute, but that's enough to just destroy those uh, T-80Bs. Now, this Su-24 M4 comes in, knocks out that um, miss, uh, Tunguska, but those Arkan missiles already almost annihilating one T-72, and they're probably going to get another one. Oh, maybe not. But you see what I mean, those Arkan missiles are absolutely lethal. And I make a micro mistake here, changing the target um, to the Afghanskis, allowing that last BMP-3 to keep popping off those Arkan missiles and the other BMP-3s with it. So I do lose a Wilk there, which is quite a... Uh, 85 points is a lot to lose to a unit that I could have gotten rid of straight away. And another Wilk taking a big hit there. So, um, I soon realised that my attack is going to be pretty well blunted. Lose another one. This one, I think, just manages to survive that. IL-102 getting absolutely annihilated before it can drop its bombs off and careering into this building. So I pull back my uh, Wilks, one of them because he's almost out of ammo and quite badly wrecked, and the other one who's on one point of health. So, you see I bring up a couple of uh, MI4s, oh, whatever they are. So, the advance is going on across the board. I've got my AA, my Commandozi Formosa, taking a bit of a kicking here, along with my Wilk, just moving up in the centre, and I've completely shoved him out of Foxtrot. Now, these circles brought up, brought up four squads of Commandozi, which is absolutely you know, a force to be reckoned with, whether you are in tanks, helicopters, or in um, all your infantry, Commandozi just tear through whatever they come in contact with. That RPG-16D is absolutely lethal. You can see here, it's only got 15 AP power, but long range, 15, uh, sorry, 60% accuracy and a high rate of fire means that it's not good for tanks. <laughs> um, and I'm just throwing my sockles out in a web here. Um, as my Formosa get closer, I want to kind of make sure he's got nothing here and start searching for his command if I can. And my Spadakunazi are moving up just, just to the edge of the tree line, along with my Wilkes and everything else. But you can see here, these four BMP3s, along with that, these T55s here, catch my, uh, my attacking infantry force in a brutal crossfire. Had I brought my Wilk up earlier in preparation, um, then I might have gotten away with it. But uh, I didn't, which is very stupid, and I lost a s couple of squads of Commandozi because of it, and I will lose these Formosa if I don't turn their weapons off. Oof, which I haven't, I don't think. No, nope. These BMP3s are going to probably kill this Wilk if they get another hit. RM70 being put to use again and not really killing anything. There were some transports back here, but he has just got these tanks packed with infantry. Lots of motor strelki with factorias and strellas. So you can see he's really thought this out. He's got anti infantry, he's got a weight of numbers in there with a close in RPGs. He's also got 80 GMs. I'd have gone for more 80 GMs for defending a town, as well as packing in some uh, AA. This Twadi is going to go very quickly, after doing very little. But I do bring in my SU-7BM to get rid of that stubborn little pile of BMT-3s. And I only managed to stun them. But this Twadi, where is it? Oof, it's quite hard to see. We will find the Twadi. Oh well, couldn't find it. But see, I'm bringing a MiG here just to run air cover. Really sexy plane, this. One of the sexier of the Russian planes. Um, 
but yeah, that Twardy, very expensive tank, went to where it just got completely wasted there because I um I decided to throw it into the open without much support. You can see against these BMP3s. So what Mabus did here was really really clever. He used these transports, these very very cheap recon tanks, to shut down my advance across the board. Don't want to bring tanks out against those Arcan missiles. Infantry are just going to get trashed. My Formosa have snuck in here very nicely, but um, there's no way I can push through the centre without bombing the crap or smoking. Um, that T-55 very sneakily sat there. I doubt he's going to be seeing much. Let's have a look. Nope, he can't see anything. Had they moved him, or had Mabus moved him up to about there, he would have been able to see quite a lot. Now, at this point, I know there's the BMP-3s in here, um, but I have no idea what's waiting for me back in these towns. So at the minute, I'm just bombing out those BMP-3s wanting to push and trying to bomb out this town. Now, Reese is bringing up um, Spetsnaz, I believe. Sorry, Mabus is bringing up Spetsnaz, I believe. And you can see here, he's got some pretty decent um, anti-tank cover. He's got the Factorias, which aren't going to do much, but they'll at least ward me off. He's got a T-80BV, which is an expensive tank at 120 points. Quite a good tank. Um, and then he's got a nice combination. Oh, that's Edgar. Okay. He's got a nice combination of good helicopters, cheap helicopters, and very cheap helicopters. But you can't frown at eight Maliutkis and 192 rockets. <laughs> Can't say no to that. So I've realised that I'm kind of stopped in the middle so I decide to smash through on the flank where I am strong. I've got six squads of Commandosi backed up with Formosa, Conkers, Nevers, Spadakanazi waiting to move and this Wilk. This Wilk is just wrecking. He's in the side, he's already nailed one of these vehicles of the MP3s. He's getting rid of those Afghanskis, which would have torn my infantry to shreds. However, he is gonna get side-shotted. Oof, that's quite painful to watch. Lucky to survive that at all. Um, he probably will not survive this next missile. Oh my god, that's unbelievably lucky. That's that's unfortunate for the Arkan to miss so many missiles in a row. Um, otherwise, that, that Wilk was... Uh, on, he was, you know, dead to rights. Now that I've got my Formosa up, Jesus, that is still so loud. Sorry, I'll, uh, I'll fix the volume settings by next time. But now that I've got my Formosa up, I can see what's in this town, and I'm just going to bomb the crap out of it. I think my Formosa moving up is a little bit preemptive here. Um, they don't yet have enough fire support. The Wilk, though, not needing to expose itself in order to bring down some support. However, if my Formosa do get into that town, they're going to completely wreck anything that's in there. Now you can see here I've brought up a T-72S, 135 points, one of my favourite models of the T-72. This is intended to push through against what I suspect is armour hiding in these woods and in this town. But um, you can see here the Formosa just, even though they're panicked, as soon as they get to work with that grenade launcher, just pounding the town and that quite underrated PM-63 as well. So they're likely going to win out in that fight as soon as they recover. And you can see, yep, my Spadakranazi here taking an absolute pasting crossing this field. Um, I really should have waited and pulled up some heavy smoke support, because I do have some heavy artillery on this deck. Should have pulled up some uh, smoke. Um, and I see here that he's bringing out Yaks, and I'm thinking, Ooh, I don't want him destroying my Commandosi. So out comes my MiG. And one missile is gonna hit. Oof. And the yaks are gonna. The MiG is a really, really stunningly good plane. Um, expensive, but worth the money, as far as I'm concerned. So my circles are just sitting here idle, not doing anything useful. But as soon as anything vaguely transporty <laughs> with grenade launchers were to pop up, I had planned to bring them in, but this Tunguska M is going to completely ruin that plan. Um, getting a lot of free kills on these uh, so-called so 
at 25 points is quite cheap for a helicopter. It does only have a 23mm cannon, but it's a good 23mm cannon. And another IHOL 102, I believe. Is it an IHOL 102? No, a Yak 38. So a cheap aircraft. But nonetheless, you um, should have really been napalming the crud out of this area if you had napalm. And I would have moved that UAZ back. No. Personally, had I been Mabus, that UAZ would have gone back there. But seeing that the Formosa are there at the minute, I'm um, maybe not. But that, those Afghanskis just annihilating my Formosa. This SU-7M is not going to get out alive, but it will get some useless bombs off. <laughs> you can see here I kind of I sent the blood. Um, I know he's fairly broken now, so I start bringing out plenty of attack helicopters. My Nevers are out of ammunition. But I'm not very worried that he's got a lot of air support left. T-72S's, two of them now moving up, taking a pasting where they really shouldn't be from his T-55's. Um, three T-72S's now. If we look here, I really get caught in pants down. Because I cannot see these, T these T-55's and a... 25 point tank just knocked out a 135 point tank and will probably or possibly kill another 135 point tank. It's an absolute. <laughs> oh, there we go, and the game's over. But that was a hell of a move on his part. Um, kind of catching me with my trousers down. Um, and. Oh, I want to turn the chat off. I'll work out how to do that later. But. Um, yeah, really fun game to play. He did very well for someone who's very new to the game. Um, you know, it's not an amazing score, but that was literally his second or third game, and he really gave me quite a uh, pardon, quite a run. Worried me a lot as well. I especially when he knocked out my Twardy, using those T55s very well as kind of a, I don't know how you say it, aggressive recon, putting them in the woods so he can see what's coming and start hitting it early. Um, I think all he could have really done was to be more aggressive at the start. He, he allowed me to gain a lot of ground and a lot of points and therefore income. Um, that big infantry force, if he'd have pushed that right up to the edge of Delta, he'd have completely uh, cleared me out initially. Probably would have caught out my Wilcan, my Commandosi and Formosa moving up. But um, yeah, and he improves every single game. And I'll be bringing you more games with him, probably us doing 2v2s and 1v1s. Um, and yeah, so the channel is now officially off its hiatus. I am to bring you three or four videos a week. Um, I'll try and vary the content. I'll have Obviously I love Red Dragon, but I'll try and bring some total war coverage, maybe some World of Tanks, uh, War Thunder. I wish I had a beta key for World of Warships, but I don't, so I can't bring you any of that. But um, yeah, I'll aim, I'll aim to bring you uh, some more games, some more interesting stuff. And maybe if this channel starts to grow, I'll, uh, I'll try and do videos with other channels. But um, anyway, thank you if you've kept on this far. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, please hit the subscribe button, and uh, I'll see you next time.